male ego. Okay, you got that? Mm. I say to Tony, clean the house. I'm going to bring back the vanilla fudge, who had a huge hit, You Keep Me Hanging On, which was a Supreme song, and they did it in a psychedelic way. I said, I'm going to bring back the fudge. They're playing on, I think it's 38th Avenue South. There's a a place, what's it called, Susan, where the... uh, um, Military kind of place, uh, building like a VFW or something, or a uh, something like that. Anyway, we're military, you know, it's a, just a big a room, big a, yeah, room. Yeah. That, so I go there, I follow the drummer Carmine Apice, who was in the movie that you saw. I follow him into the dra- uh, bathroom. I'd say, I'm Michael Braun, and stage clothes. Uh, and I make the mistake of saying, where do you get your clothes? And he said, hey, Ashbury, Carnaby Street, and the village. And I say, well, this is what we're making. What I have is way better than what he's wearing. I mean, way. I said, you want to come to our house after the gig? Fine. Three of the four guys came. They bought everything that remotely fit them and that we could alter for them. And then they wear it on Ed Sullivan, which is the show live Sunday night, eight to nine, big deal. All kind of rock and roll people played that gig. Anyway, now the public, you know, freaks out over the vanilla fudge. The clothes are cool, unbeknownst to me. They're on the road with a new guitar player who's come from England named Jimi Hendrix, okay? Meaning he's from Seattle, but he was in England. Now he comes to America. He's on the road with them. This is before he explodes. Jimmy says to Carmine, where'd you get the clothes? This is one sentence. Carmine says, our friends in Florida. I didn't know we were friends, meaning... We made clothes for them, you know, but we're not hanging out. Um, Not that I wouldn't, but I'm just saying, he says, our friends in Florida. I go to see a record producer on First Avenue South, almost the 66th Street, a guy named Phil Gernhardt, who produced Abraham, Martin, and John, um, Snoopy versus the Red Baron, and Stay by Maurice Williams and the Zodiacs. So these are three huge records. I take all the clothes, I go to his office, small office, whatever, and I show him the clothes, and he says to me, listen, I'll tell Jimmy about you, but I'm not going to push you on to Jimmy. I don't want to upset him before the gig. He's an emotional guy. You know, it's nothing to me. I'm not getting anything out of this, so... You call me Sunday afternoon, 4 o'clock. Sunday afternoon comes. It's 4 o'clock. I dial his number. He picks up the phone. He says, Michael, you're not going to believe this. Jimmy gets off the plane and says, where are the clothes people? Okay? So all I'm saying to you is that you could say, you know, in the language of our time, they'd say, oh, you were in the right place at the right time or you know, this is just luck or whatever. Mm. This is destiny mm. working out. This is just insanity, crazy. Now we end up making clothes for Jimmy and back to the beginning of what I was trying to say and that is that, so you have this person that has a little bit of creative talent for clothes, for art, for two-dimensional art, um, but that's where his brain is. If you say to him, listen, I need you to be my lawyer. I committed this murder. Here's a million dollars in cash. Yes, I'm going to take your money. They're going to hang you. I got no ability to argue (laughs) whatsoever. You know, (laughs) I mean, none. So all I'm saying to you, I'm accepting how the game is going because I'm forced into it. Jimmy is saying to me in a letter, Anything you come across, 
don't be hesitant to make something anything to your fancy as long as it's specially made as art, period. That's in the middle of the letter. Especially made as art. What did he mean by that? I talked to him. You know, what he's talking to, this is two humans communicating in English, but he's got his version of English, how he calls things. I made a shirt for him, and it's in Life magazine where I used three squares of Velcro. In the letter, he says, try to match the color of the sticky type buttons to the color of the shirt or as close as possible. In the meantime, Velcro just came out. He never heard the word Velcro, hmm. for sure. It just came out then. They only made it in white, but he called it sticky type buttons. What you and I have on our heads, he calls them ear goggles. That's just how he talks. You understand what I'm Did saying? Did he really call them ear goggles? Yeah, really? Uh, do wow. I, could I make this up? <laughs> I guess not. That's pretty <laughs> fucking amazing. So what I'm saying to you is that he knew by seeing the clothes that we showed him in the beginning, then we made him clothes. Now we're making clothes for him every three to four months. I'm sending him a whole wardrobe, shirts, pants, jackets, scarves, armbands. Now he's writing me letters, to this letter to say, I need more of this, I need one of and more unusual sleeves. So mm. at one point, he shows me we're in the Sheridan Hotel downtown Tampa. It's towards the beginning. And he shows me a sleeve that instead of being small, it's maybe this big. You know, Mike, he's not playing with a full deck, the poor thing. So how does he cut it? Are you talking about yourself? Yes. Okay. How does he cut it? He cuts it from the armpit to way out here, way, this much. You'll see hundreds of pictures on the net of this. And he's using, and then six inch ruffles along the edge. He's buying this fabric, this is silk chiffon and then all other kind of silks and stuff. But he's buying this fabric in St. Petersburg and in Tampa in the fancy ladies fabric store. He's walking in with hair out to his shoulders into a thing that only women go into. Men aren't going to buy fabric to take the fabric to their seamstress to make a gown for their whatever party that they're going to to show off. 